What's up, everybody? I'm back, and I got another stadium slash racetrack view to do today. Uh, you remember you saw the vlog. Of course, you know, I went to Bristol Motor Speedway for the night race back in September of 2022. And, you know, probably a lot of you were probably not wondering, but maybe some, some of you were. Where's the racetrack to be? You know, you did Michigan, you did Indy, and then, you know, it's finally out. I'm recording it, like, around when I'm making all the other stuff, but I have a large backlog, so it's a uh, while coming. But here it is. Uh, I'm going to give my full in-depth analysis of my... I'm not going to really recap my whole day there. If you want my full experience uh, recap, go check out the episode 8 of the Talking NASCAR podcast. This is where we talk about that. And I go through all my stuff there. In this review, I'm going to be talking about the facility itself and all of its amenities that you can expect to get there. Not just if you go see a NASCAR race, but any other event you go there to see. I know they've hosted they've hosted a lot. Bristol's not, not just hosting NASCAR races. They've hosted a football game, Tennessee and Virginia Tech back in 2016. They hosted a football game there, um, and they've hosted like concerts and stuff there as well. So it's it's more of a it's more than just a NASCAR track, though it was built to be a NASCAR track. So that's its main draw, as I should say. Uh, a little bit of fun fact: it is the fourth largest stadium. The fourth largest sporting venue in the United States and in the tenth largest in the world, they can seat a hundred and approximately a hundred and fifty-three thousand people, um, which I think is third on the Cup scale. With, well, well, if you don't count Indy because they do the road course there now, um, it would seat probably third on the Cup schedule behind only Daytona and Talladega. If you count Indy, it's fourth. Um, so I guess you count Andy because, you know, they could sit anywhere, I guess. I don't know. But um, that's not what we're here for. That's just a little fun fact. So uh, what do you expect? Well, Bristol has a very towering presence over it, where it is. It's located in Bristol, Tennessee. It's actually about 20 minutes south of the town of Bristol. Um, the town of Bristol itself is very small. Uh, a lot of small shops. You know, we saw a bank. Um, we saw, you know, a little few homes. And, you know, it's a very back road country feel. You're going through the mountains. You're going through the trees. And you're going up and down hills. And, and you see the rivers. And you see the fog. And you see little shacks and little restaurants and little gas stations. All local stuff. And then you look over to your left. Well, at least when we were coming in, we look over to our left. Boom! There's Bristol just sitting there. Absolutely massive, big modern racing facility, just sitting there, being awesome. Now we didn't; it didn't look as tolerating as a presence if it was in like more of a flat region of the country, um, because of the mountains. It kind of just, it kind of like pocketed in these mountains, like all these mountains around it. It's got a absolutely gorgeous backdrop because of the mountains. It's absolutely beautiful, um, but then there's a bunch of other stuff around. Like the mountains, and then it's like there's the tracks like in this little valley area, um, so that it's a really nice backdrop, and it, it really sticks out, and it's really really cool, especially at night. It really sticks out too. Little thing to know, there is like a little swamp near the track. We had to cross a bridge over it to get to the track, um, but that's like across the street. There's two main roads that go next to Bristol. We were in. I was looked on the map. There's a restaurant there and a pro shop, like a Bristol shop. We didn't see either of those while we were there, um, but I was informed. I looked on the map, and I'm sure that we were informed that the shop was there, but the um, the uh, what's it called? The restaurant we did not see. I think it's a Rusty Wallace themed shop, um, which is uh, crazy. But um, and then but there's two main roads and stuff, and then they got fields and stuff for camping and parking and stuff like that. Um, of course, you hang out all around the track because unless you get the infield stuff, we didn't go in the infield, so I'm not going to talk about what's in the infield or whatever. Um, but the stuff on the outside, I mean, everything out every Bristol's a very more modern facility, it's very updated. Um, being one of the better NASCAR tracks, it seems like it's going to be more taken care of. Um, you know, some places, some parts look a little outdated, and it is a NASCAR track, so you can expect that, but. The tower looks really nice with the Bristol sign on, especially at night when it's lit up. You can see that in the vlog. I got a little shot of that. It's all lit up. It's really, really cool. Um, it looks for, It's pretty clean, very modern. You know, you can tell a lot of the workers there, uh, volunteer workers or not, were, have a lot of pride for the track and have a lot of pride for this event. 
uh, that we went to, the night race. And I'm sure they have pride for the other events too. They have a lot of pride, a lot of respect for the track, and they take good care of it, and they take good care of the people that support it and everything. And so that was pretty cool to see. Um, and it was more about respect. They respect this history. You go into the speedway itself. You go in the grandstands. They got to your... We were From where we were sitting on the front stretch, you look to the left. They've got pictures and moments, iconic moments in Bristol history, like when it opened, when Bruton Smith bought the track, uh, the Terry Labonte Dale Earnhardt clashes, the It's Bristol Baby quoted, the football games on there, and uh, a few other things are on there too. And so really commemorating its history and recognizing, yeah, we, we're an iconic track. This is into the right, we were saying to the right, it's got uh, iconic people and families in Bristol's history. Uh, I think that the Walt Trips, the uh, Rawlis, uh, Ern, Earnhardt was not there. I think Jeff Gordon may have been there. Um, the people that have, uh, drivers and stuff that have been iconic to the track, and that was really cool. Uh, there's a lot of sweets, too. It looked more not like a NASCAR track that I would imagine. It looked more like a giant-ass coliseum, and that's why it's called the last great coliseum. <coughs> it's compl I'm, not, I'm not sick anymore, guys. I'm just a little tired. But you look around, I mean, it's all just a complete encasing of uh, bleachers and suites and signs and all this amazing stuff. It looked really, really cool. And it's fully enclosed to what's I guess, for the Coliseum type feel. But it's it looks very intimidating. All these people. And it was a near, perf, near full crowd, too. So you can expect all these people. You know, they're pretty intimidating, which was really, really cool. They paint the wall black uh, for the night. And then the concrete sticks out, too. Especially if it's like a green racetrack, it sticks out pretty clean. Uh, which is really, really cool. And they got a lighted sign up on the top. says, World Fastest Half Mile. That was pretty cool uh, to see as well. Now... A couple of complaints, uh, though. It wasn't all perfect. One thing was complaint. One of the big things is that it's hilly, and that's the product of it being in the mountains. Um, it is just super, super hilly. I was so surprised um, that how hilly the track actually is. Um, even, like, we were walking around, and they have these roads that go around the track, like, like access roads for, like, uh, service workers or whatever, maintenance workers. And even that's like a super steep incline up from one part to the next. So we walk up to that top and we were absolutely exhausted. I mean, I'm not the slowest walker in the world. I'm not the weakest walker in the world. But even that wore me out. It's a tip of advice. If you want to go to Bristol, see a race there or see a concert there or see an event there, remember to bring walking shoes because you're going to need them. Um, so just a little tip there. Um, but they also, they had a nice tram system, though, to combat that, and so I was, uh, pr that was pretty relieving to be able to like, get on a golf cart or get on a tram and go from one place to the other, because all the stuff, because of its hilly terrain, and it's not even just outside the track that's hilly, it's inside the track, in the concourse, there were hills, there were stairs to get one level to the next, they were level, it wasn't completely like a, like a basketball ring in a concourse or anything like that. Which I thought was a little surprising too. Like the outside I can get because of the terrain, but the inside too was hilly, which was crazy. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't as hard to walk though as the outside portion. They made it a little bit easier to walk at least, and they have stairs and stuff, and which make it easier too. Um, and then, and the reason for the trams, I guess, is to take you in the hills of place to place. Because of the hills, uh, all the events like all the pre race events or all the pre stuff isn't necessarily going to be in one location or easy to like one section of the track uh we had stuff that was where we parked on the back stretch and and all the way on the other side so even though it's only a half mile long you still have to walk a good distance to get to the other stuff and that was a little annoying and that's more about my race day experience and i don't want to really get into that here because this is a review of the facility itself um, that was just something I noticed because it, it has like little pockets of places where they can put stuff and where they can put parking lots and make events and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, 
Now, the atmosphere here, I talked this a little bit about earlier. But the atmosphere here wasn't was awesome. Again, the workers have a huge respect and huge pride for the track, and they make sure you have a great experience. The fans, too. The fans have a love the Speedway. All the drivers, all the work, all the uh, event media people, they just love Bristol, and they're wanting to put on the most exciting best experience and you get goosebumps walking into the track and shaking and it's so amazing actually being there um and seeing it's a lot different than seeing it on tv um being in the crowd and being in the events was was something that i'll never forget it was crazy now they do another thing under the complaint their policies um they have like rules and restrictions of what you can bring into the track and stuff like that one of them is rolling coolers and like hard coolers can't bring those in um yet we saw rolling coolers once we got into the track meaning the policies really aren't that much enforced and i guess that's what the problem when you have teenagers vol college volunteer workers running this event they don't really care they don't want to fight the crowds they just want to get people in and get paid and, or get their reward and leave or just leave in general um so i guess you kind of get that but that was a little annoying that the policies were enforced because we were stressing over not being able to bring our cooler in even though it was a soft cooler but it was a little too big for the requirements but they let us in anyways um so that wasn't a problem but just know that the policies aren't really going to be enforced so don't expect them to be enforced uh, and then I have to give credit to the parking, to the uh, the parking crews and the teams that were running the parking lots. Um, compared to MIS especially, and to the concert that we went to a couple of weeks, about a month ago at this point, um, the parking was super, super efficient. Um, because, you know, they park in, like, grass lots and stuff, and then you have to try and get out. We went out through a campground. But, like, we, at Michigan, we were used to sitting in the parking lot for one, two hours waiting to leave. Um, one, because, you know, it's one road to leave, and two, it's, um, you know, a lot of people going and condensing into one spot, and just heavy traffic in general. In Bristol, there was more people than they go to Michigan, so we're expecting a lot of traffic, when there really wasn't much at all. I mean, we're held up a little bit, going up a hill, and, you know, we stop and go, but, like, we passed that, like, we were out in, like, 20 minutes. That was it. It was crazy. Like, max 20 minutes. That was insane. Huge kudos to the parking crew. Huge kudos to that. And it also could be because they have multiple roads that lead to the track and go around the track. And they have multiple campgrounds. So they pocket the crowds and make it a little easier to work through them individually pocketed. Uh, so I think that might have helped a little bit too. But still, it was crazy how easy it was to get out. Um, so take note of that if you ever go to Bristol. Um, going through that. So... That's my review of Bristol from my notes. Uh, overall, my full-on rating overall. Probably have to give this a good 9 out of 10. This was a really f cool facility. And if you're a big NASCAR fan, you're going to love it more than somebody who's just going for see like a concert there. But I think if you, even if you're just a casual fan or a not even a fan at all, and you step inside this facility and you see it in person, it is just awesome awe-inspiring and jaw-dropping it's not perfect not perfect nothing's perfect but it's really close to perfect and uh it's definitely worth your time to take a trip down to the last great coliseum either to see the track see a race there see a concert there see another football game there if they ever had one I think it's definitely worth y'all's time, as I should say, from the south. Um, that's going to do for this racetrack review. If you've ever been to Bristol to see a race, concert, football game, any other event, you've just been there in general, or you want to go there, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments section down below, my notes and thoughts, and any other thoughts you want to add. Um, let's have a little bit of a discussion. So stay tuned for much more amazing content. Probably no more racetrack reviews for a while, but we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. And uh, until next time, I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Yeah,